My previous video on a crazy religious story has really gotten me to think on the subject. Whether or not you believe in what the Bible says, in my opinion, it's best to have a good understanding on its message before accepting it or rejecting it altogether. Not having any sort of knowledge on these stories and teachings can make you sound either ignorant or a complete nutcase. Understanding context is the most basic example of gaining knowledge in any religious text. Unfortunately, this isn't taught that often in churches. We have a listen and believe mentality towards any pastor or priest that says pretty words in a convincing manner. And, well, this isn't good. Blindly following someone based on their word alone can lead many people down a path of lies and deception. It's the one major advantage I see with many atheist YouTubers when they criticize religion. They're questioning what the person or the text itself says. They're not taking something at face value, they're doing research for themselves. Now this doesn't apply to all of them, some just like to spit on religion. But some do, and I respect that. Critically thinking of the Bible or any religious text is a good thing. Questioning what a pastor says, even questioning the lessons and authenticity of the Bible itself is the only way to gain knowledge over the subject. People aren't perfect, they can get something wrong, and everyone, atheists, Christians, and even pastors should be held accountable. And thus enters William Tapley. Mr. Tapley is an interesting guy to say the least, but what he preaches is nothing but lies and is obvious to anyone with a basic understanding on how to research. Don't take my word on it either. Do your own research, even on my reasonings for thinking this Catholic YouTuber is saying nothing but a lie. For context, because context is important, the King James Version of the Bible is what I use for research, as well as Google for some of the more Catholic-centered terminology. I'm not Catholic, nor was I ever raised around anybody Catholic, so I had to do some research outside of the Bible into some of these claims Mr. Tapley is making, and boy is he making some bold ones. See, Mr. Tapley is saying that he's a chosen person of God to deliver warnings of the end times. In March, he made a video about some predictions he heard about that he took at face value, most of which was said to take place that month. For context's sake, let's look at what was said before moving on to the video I want to talk about. So beginning on March 3rd would be the beginning of sorrows. The public media announces Pope slash Cardinals flee Rome. Which didn't happen. 10 to 11. In March, the translation, the great rescue of God's chosen people all over the USA to the refuge. Yeah, that didn't happen. And for... March 11th and 12th, there will be a surprise preemptive nuclear attack by Russia upon the United States and a conventional war upon Israel by Iran. That didn't happen. And March 25th, the date of the Great Warning announced... Didn't happen. How can you tell that someone's a compulsive liar? I mean, assuming that their pants aren't on fire. Okay, you get it. Guy made a video of predictions that didn't happen. Well, towards the end of March, he uploaded a video trying to explain why his first prediction about the Pope fleeing Rome hasn't happened yet. This will be a weird one, so let's get this over with. Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. So you're an eagle? Are we going to some other kin stuff as well, or will you start flying Frodo and Sam out of Mordor after they destroyed the One Ring? And co-profit, huh? That's not really a thing, dude. But that's interesting considering the Bible says that false prophets will arise before the end times. Am I saying the end times are definitely upon us? No, it's just interesting to me. That's all. Am I saying this William Tapley is a false prophet? Yes! I am! How can I tell he's a fake? Well, let's continue on, shall we? It's been a couple of weeks since my last program, and I had been waiting for Pope Benedict to be forced out of the Vatican. And on that program, I'm sure you will remember, I read a message from Mara Stella Yezu, a seer here in the United States, and she predicted that Pope Benedict would be forced out on March the 3rd. I tried looking this Mari girl up, but apparently that's not her real name. In fact, the only thing I found about her was in Mr. Eagle Boy's previous video. You may remember, back in August, I received a message from a very interesting lady here in the United States who was organizing a safe refuge for these end times under the direction of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
And at that time, I said I would give you some more information as soon as I received it. And she did send me a message, oh, a week and a half ago about, and I'm going to give that to you right now. I'm going to call her by her spiritual name, Mari Stella Yezu. And since I'm against doxing and understand why people want to stay anonymous, I'll just let Mr. Tapley have this one and move on. Before uploading this video, I decided to check on Mr. Tapley's channel for anything new and saw that Mari Stella Yezu has recently passed away. I sincerely hope she rests in peace. I am truly sorry to hear about her passing. But this video wasn't about her, it was about William Tapley, and I only mentioned her at all for context to try and fill everyone in on exactly what Mr. Tapley was talking about. And with all that said, let's continue with the video. She predicted that Pope Benedict would be forced out on March the 3rd, and that did not happen, much to the consternation of many of you in my audience, even though it's a good thing that he was not forced out. And I keep having to remind you people that Maristela Yezu mentioned two caveats at the beginning of her message, and that was that those prophecies were not written in stone. Any excuse as to why a prophecy involving a specific time frame didn't happen. But, um, what specifically did you say in that previous video? What were these caveats? Number one, whatever, whenever, and however events actually unfold, one must repent of one's sins to be spiritually prepared, making several acts of perfect contrition every single morning, day, and night. And number two, some dates believed to be confirmed as correct, others interpolated and believed to be correct. Others interpolated and believed to be correct. So they were correct, but they didn't happen, so therefore they weren't correct? But what's this about interpolation? Well, the definition of it is to insert something into something else. Kinda kinky, though it also means to insert words into another book or text in order to give a false impression. So either you're just spouting big words to sound smart, or you're lying to your audience, giving them a false time frame to cover your wrinkly butt in case you're wrong about your predictions. Can that be true? No way. I mean, is it even possible? I couldn't imagine. Pope Benedict has not been forced out, but they really want him out. And when I say they, I mean the one world government the one world religion. And you can tell your friends by who they hate. And they hate Donald Trump most of all. And they also hate Pope Benedict and the other Ben, Benjamin Netanyahu. They are trying to force him out also. Oh no, this isn't just a religious nut, but also a conspiracy theorist. Just carry me away on a trip through the inner machinations of your mind, Eagle. And I'll let you in on my little secret. Tell me. I've mentioned this before, I think the two Bens, Benjamin Netanyahu and Pope Benedict, are the two E's, and that is Enoch and Elijah. Are you sure about that? What are you smoking and can I have some? You seriously think that Pope Benedict and Yahoo, uh, other Yahoo, are the Old Testament prophets Enoch and Elijah? Something tells me this is complete bullcrap. Let's just call it a hunch. And according to that Jewish teenager in Natan, Enoch and Elijah, now he just mentioned Elijah, and he called him the Mashiach, but that's who he was referring to. He says that they don't, they themselves do not know their own identity. And I believe that. I don't believe they will know who they are until they resurrect from their assassination. Is everybody dumb? I'm starting to understand why stereotypical atheists think the way they do about us Christians. Okay, first off, what proof do you have? This is all hearsay. You're only telling your audience what you have heard from random people. Where is their evidence? In fact, where is your evidence? What links these men to the Old Testament prophets? With claims like this, you need to show proof. And did you honestly just predict the assassinations of a major religious figure and government official? That's not smart, you could have the Illuminati after you or the reptilians, or the greys, men in black. And they are already degrading him in Rome. It's really something terrible. Now let me show you this sculpture that they just recently put out. And this was shown in the news 
Oh, a couple of weeks ago. It would have been better to put the picture up in post, dude. That way, I wouldn't be distracted by your poorly trimmed fingernails. Oh, a couple of weeks ago. Notice how they are degrading him by showing him without his papal garments. In other words, they don't want you to realize that Pope Benedict is the true Pope. Except he's not. Pope Francis is. But honestly, I don't give a crap because I'm not Catholic. The Pope has no authority over me. I don't need a high priest or a mediator between me and God. And so what? Some people made a statue of Benedict nude and wrinkly. The person who made that did it to honor Benedict, not mock him. Get your facts straight. Though looking at this now, I think Benedict should start laying off the Italian food. And they are beginning to realize they have to get rid of Pope Benedict because we have never in the Catholic Church had two popes living in the Vatican at the same time. This is unique in all of history. And the reason the Lord is allowing this is to show that there is a true Pope, Pope Benedict, and a false Pope, Pope Francis. And all Catholics, in fact, all Christians are going to have to learn the difference. Well, Francis does have a shady past involving genetic experiments as finding a psychotic naked man in a burning building. Wait, wrong Francis. My bad. In reality, it seems that Benedict just decided to quit one day and the Catholic Church needed a replacement. The old dude just got tired, Mr. Eagle of the Apocalypse. It's understandable, and not the first time it's happened. It's happened a few times before that. But go on with your conspiracy theories, it has been very interesting so far. Now another event this past week was that the Vatican tried to say that Pope Benedict really supports Pope Francis. And they issued this photograph which showed a letter from Pope Benedict supposedly supporting Pope Francis. And it got a lot of attention in the media, naturally. The media is controlled by Satan. I wasn't serious. Don't go on. And I want to read some of this article. It was on LifeSite News. And here's the, uh, here's the headline. And you can see that. And it says... Breaking Vatican admits leaving out another <coughs> key paragraph <coughs> from Benedict's letter on Francis. So let me read some of this for you because this is really interesting. I'm going to spare you a few minutes of this here. To summarize, part of a letter Benedict wrote to Pope Francis was censored because he was surprised that someone who wrote a book compilation for the Vatican says some anti-papal things about him and Pope John Paul II. You know, the guy who had a huge sex scandal about him while he was still alive and in power over the Catholic Church. I wonder why someone would write bad things about that guy. But anyway, Mr. Eagle now doesn't trust the Vatican anymore because they're nothing more than a lying liar from Liarsburg. And well, let's just let him explain. What a lot of baloney coming out of the Vatican these days. And that's because Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. In Revelation 11, verse 2, where the holy city is trampled underfoot by the Gentiles for 42 months. And the holy city which is the Vatican, is being trampled under by the Gentiles. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot for forty and two months. Very interesting indeed. Now he claims that this is happening already, except he left out a couple of things. One is that the chapter goes on to talk about two people who will be prophets clothed only in sackcloth. That hasn't happened yet. Why hasn't it happened yet? Because the other thing Mr. Third Eagle of the Apocalypse either left out or fails to understand is that the majority of revelations take place after the church ceases to exist on earth. According to Christians, the church will be raptured up into heaven before the world is supposed to end. Seven years beforehand, to be exact. It's irrelevant if whether or not this is true and if this will actually happen because the so-called co-prophet's point is completely debunked with this single question. Does church still exist? Let me rephrase that. Are there still people on this earth who claim to believe in God, believe Jesus is the Son of God, who still follow his word, and who calls themselves Christian? Yes! 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 Since that's the case, the reference this man gave was taken completely out of context because he's applying an event that hasn't happened yet, and some who believe it will never happen to this current time frame. His teachings, his ideology, it doesn't line up given the context of the book of Revelations. He goes on and reads the entire letter from Benedict, but I won't bore you. It goes on for a while. Let's just pick up in the last couple of minutes here. So as I say, you really can't trust anything coming out of the Vatican these days. The Vatican is being trampled under by the Gentiles as prophesied by John. 
in the book of Revelation. Because the Vatican is in Italy, the entire country is full of Gentiles. The term Gentile simply refers to any human who isn't a Jew. The Jewish homeland isn't Italy, it's Israel. And what city in Israel is considered a holy city in the Bible? Jerusalem not the Vatican. Where will the Temple of Solomon be rebuilt, which is a sign mentioned in the Bible of the end times coming? It ain't in the Vatican, that's for sure. This guy doesn't even know when or where this whole event in Revelations 11 2 will take place. Would you seriously put your trust in him when he's saying these blatant lies? And now I want to show you a stamp, which has been published by the Vatican. And this is for this year. And this has been called Gymnasium Jesus, because it looks like Jesus, I guess it's his resurrection or his ascension, and it's supposed to show him in good physical condition, as if he goes to the gym three times a week. What? So Jesus isn't allowed to go to the gym and get ripped? Tricep extensions with a five second negative. This keeps tension on the muscle for a longer period of time. In this phase of training, he's not trying to go heavy. But what's interesting to me is this little demon face down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I tilt it just a little bit. Am I tilting? Oh, I'm here. I'm, there you go. How's that? Can you see the, the demon face? I think it's fairly clear. You can see the demon's eye. You can see the demon's nostril. You can see the demon's mouth. No, I can't see it because your finger and dirty untrimmed fingernail are in the way. Okay, I can see it now. Let's just circle the part he mentions here, and this is just a Rorsak chest. It looks like a demon face to him, but to me it looks like Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar, Jet Jaguar, Jaguar. To someone else, it would look like something completely different. In truth, it's just a small section of a drawing. The video is basically over at this point, but I'm not done with Mr. William Tapley here. He has a website called thirdeaglemedia.com, because of course it's called that. It's your basic low quality site filled with his various teachings, prophecies, and donation pages, because because of course he's selling out his prophetic wares. No, you're prophetic. But if you look at his about me section, you will notice he explains why he called himself the third eagle of the apocalypse and a co-prophet. And now finally, I will explain my titles. Often when I was studying the end times interpretation of Revelation, I would come to a mental block. At that point, I would pause and take a walk while praying the rosary. On one such walk, it occurred to me to ask the Lord, who is the eagle of the apocalypse? Revelations 8.13. My thoughts immediately answered, you are. This really startled me, but I knew that it came from God and was not a product of my imagination. He goes on to say that he researched and found there were two eagles that came before him speaking of bad times of Catholic history, both mainly involving Martin Luther's reformation and split from the church. Revelations 8.13, like most of the rest of the book, takes place during the end times. And there are no eagles mentioned. They're angels. Go figure, he took the Bible out of context again. Couldn't have predicted that, even if I was a prophet. Now about the other title. Regarding my title, Co-Prophet of the End Times, several passages in Daniel explain. Read Daniel 12.4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the end of the time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Obviously, someone must come along to unseal Daniel. Read Daniel 12.9, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. The time of the end is now, and my job is to do the unsealing. Well, yes, that chapter does involve an end time prophecy, but it's God's responsibility to reveal these secrets if or when the time comes, not Mr. Tapley's. I mean, why you gotta be stealing God's job? Check your prophet privilege. In fact, all end times Bible prophecy requires a co-prophet and a prophet because it is work of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit always requires two people to accomplish his plan. So he's saying that there's always a system of two people doing God's work. A pair of people working together doing things for a supernatural force. Kind of like a rule of two system going on. Where have I heard that before? There's no doubt the mysterious warrior was a Sith. Mm. Always two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. But which was destroyed? The master or the apprentice? This man is a false prophet. If you believe the word of God is true, don't listen to him. If you don't, then please know that this man doesn't speak for all Christians or even all Catholics. We're not all insane. I'm only slightly crazy. <laughs> <laughs>